Dr. Doka, thank you for talking with me today. You're a leader in the field of thanatology and the author of a new book, the second edition of Counseling Individuals with Life-Threatening Illness. One of the assets of this book is its cultural sensitivity. What can you tell us about how cultural factors and demographics affect the experience of a gravely ill person? Well, one of the things we really try to stress in the book is is the whole issue of diversity. And certainly that diversity includes ethnic and racial diversity, um, what we what broadly might be called cultural diversity or one aspect of cultural diversity, um, which really refer refers how how a person's background, their ethnicity, um, may influence um, the choices that they make, may complicate or their adaptation to life-threatening illness. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples of that, uh, I once had a Haitian-American woman uh, who, when she came in, was very, very concerned. Her surgery was relatively minor, um, but as, as her physician said, no surgery is really minor. Um, and um, and as we talk with her, uh, she was very convinced that, that she was not going to make it through the surgery, and the physician was very concerned about uh, doing surgery when when she felt that way, um, and so I ended up being called in and having a conversation with her, and it was evident that she believed that she was being cursed, um, and so we actually had an indigenous healer come in and and remove the the curse, and bless the healer's hands, and it's that kind of cultural sensitivity that we need to have, and again, it's not only ethnicity. Um, one of the sources, often ignored sources of cultural diversity, are generational differences. Um, you know, my father was the GI generation. If a doctor told him to do something, it was it was an order. He did it. It was there was no question. If he said take medication at four o'clock, um, my father would look at his watch and at the stroke of four take the medication. Um, when you look at baby boomers, for example, we're much more likely to question authority. We're much more likely to 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 want to know reasons, to want alternatives, to have some control. Um, if you look at younger generations, um, they're often going to look at what the doctor says and compare it to WebMD. Um, they're digital. They're digital natives rather than digital immigrants. So cultural diversity and sensitivity to cultural diversity means being sensitive to all the differences that exist. Um, and again, um, these differences profoundly influence care. We know, for example, that because of the mistrust that many African Americans have had toward the medical system, um, going back to Tuskegee, Tuskegee, I can't get that word out today, but. Um, but going back to the experiments on uh, on syphilis, that there's often a distrust of the medical profession, and often um, because of that, and because of of, of spirituality issues, uh, often a reluctance to accept that care uh, is now palliative. So again, it's that sensitivity which which we try to weave throughout the book.